one of the most common questions I get is how can I save money? Usually I'll make a few suggestions on where people can pare down with their bills. And for the most part, people are open. Ditch the cable? Check. Eat out less? Check. Dump your cell phone? Wait, wait, wait. That's not going to happen. Americans love their smartphones. According to a recent Pew Research survey, 68% of adults in the United States currently own a smartphone. That's a considerable jump up from 35% in 2011. And I get it. Both of us have smartphones. They're awesome, and we use them for so much more than just calling. The problem we have is price. Up until a few years ago, we were paying $150 a month for two lines. Between the two of us, we've been on all the major carriers, Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile, AT&T, and we've been with smaller carriers that got bought up. We switched providers to see if we could get better deals since the service and coverage, for the most part, were fairly equivalent, at least where we were. If you feel the same way, I think you'll like this episode because now there are innovators and competitors who are offering service at a fraction of the price you've been paying. And one of these companies, Republic Wireless, is on the show today to share what's going on with smartphones. In this episode, we'll get into how the technology has shifted, and more importantly for your wallet, how you can save big. I hope you enjoy. How much was your cell phone bill for the two of you last month? 180, 150, maybe 100? What's the cheapest plan you've seen? 70 bucks? How would you like to drop it even lower? Like under 50? The average customer on refunds now pays about uh, just under $14. You heard that right, $14. Yeah, yeah. Well, we get that reaction quite a lot. It did start back then. That people thought that the offer was too good to be true. That's John Schneep, Senior Vice President of Product Management over at Republic Wireless. He's here to share how companies like Republic can disrupt the cell phone business. Their secret really comes down to two things. The first? The technical part of it is pretty interesting, and we've learned a lot over the years. But when it comes down to it, we've learned how to make calls sound great over Wi-Fi, And we've learned how to make sure that when you're on a call on Wi-Fi, it can seamlessly transition to cell networks. Okay, maybe not bond level cool, but more like MacGyver clever. I'm going to get us out of this mess cool. And the key piece technology to this is Wi-Fi. All of those hotspots around your city can be a huge help in lowering your bills. Republic Wireless started looking at them years ago as a way to offload calls. When when we started Republic Wireless, it was based on this idea that cell phone service could be different and should be different. So we had this hypothesis that we could use Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi networks as a way to avoid this you know expensive thing that we were paying for, but still communicate as much as we wanted to. So that it was it, that was kind of the spark back in 2011. Um, that 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 started the whole thing, and you know, since then we've been trying to live up to the ideal. Is that can we can we create some technology that allows you to communicate as one as much as you want to, uh, connect with the people you care about, and just in the way that you're used to, because you're using different networks, we can unlock these savings for folks. Sounds simple, right? But it can get complicated and hairy as you're moving calls from cell to Wi-Fi and back again. Wi-Fi offloading is helpful to you as a customer because you have more options for providers. You can switch to companies like Republic Wireless or Google Fi, and competition can be an awesome thing. Now, the second secret to Republic's success is their members. Ever since they were offering service only through invitations, their focus has been on building a community. Republic Wireless introduced Labs to allow customers to test out and give feedback on features, and in a recent breakthrough, the service plan themselves. Refund plans took a long time, honestly, to get from idea to in in the hands of customers. 
we were analyzing data and talking to customers. We know that you know the, the rate plans that we offer are really important to our customers. So making changes in those, we, we think long and hard and very careful about those changes. So that's part of the reason it, it takes so long. But the, the kind of the stages that we go through are early on, we're talking to customers and we're analyzing a lot of data and we're trying to figure out, is there an opportunity to create savings for people? Uh, for this for the for these plans and for the refund plans um, you know there was a bunch of different ideas on the table at the time um, you know of different ways we could save these low using customers more money um, we could have done rollover data which is you know it's become pop more popular recently um, and we could have done a couple of other plan structures so what we did along the way was we kind of invented a whole set of options that we you know thought were interesting to pursue and then we did some more customer research we put these plan ideas in front of people and we got their reactions and we did some surveys and things like that so that was kind of the first couple of months of evaluating it once we had picked a winner so to speak then it goes into this second phase of of really putting all the pieces together so that's when we're building the core technology that powers it um, we have a, a great team internally here who does a, all of our back office automation and they had a really interesting challenge of like how do we keep track of everybody's data usage um, and at the end of the month make sure that you know we've calculated it precisely and we've given them back all the money that we owe them because one thing we really know about our customers is they watch every penny, and uh, if we're not fair <laughs> with every penny, we're going to hear about it. And we think that's cool, but it's a high bar. So if you don't use up your data, great, you get a refund. And this idea of charging customers for what they actually use sounds like common sense, but it isn't. At least not when it comes to cell phone companies. Major providers like T-Mobile can offer rollover, which is cool in my book. But innovative companies like Ting, where you can build your plan based on how you use your phone, and Republic's refunds are better. Some in the industry believe that these disrupting companies are causing the big players to make drastic changes, such as dropping those two-year contracts. So paying attention to what these smaller companies are doing now can give you an idea of what may be happening down the line for the big providers. That is, if you don't already want to make the switch. And we're really fired up about a whole lot of new things coming in 2016. Over the next six weeks, we're going to be introducing, we're going to actually announce like a whole lot of new things. Um, so um, things like new phone options, things like uh, new, new kind of tweaks on uh, plan options to save people more money. Um, more consistent call quality technology. So it's, it's, it's going to be an action-packed uh, year for Republic, and a lot of it's going to happen, honestly, in the, next, uh, in the next six weeks. While I'm happy with my Moto X, I love people having more choices. So if you're not being treated the way you should from your cell phone company, now's the time to branch out. Special thanks to John for coming on the show. If you're looking to make the switch with your smartphone plan, please check out Republic Wireless. I love them and their service. Of course, I got a list of other providers I mentioned in the show, like Ting, in the notes so you can find what's the right fit for you. Just a disclaimer, a few links I have on the show notes are from sites I've partnered up with. There's no cost or charge to you, but if you do sign up, you'll be supporting the podcast. If you prefer to directly support the podcast, then sign up to become a patron, a dollar, five dollar a month. It goes a long way to making this a better podcast for you. On next week's show, we're going to look at another bill people have to deal with, student loans. We'll see if refinancing is a smart option for you. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. It's free and easy. We're out there on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, and more. You can also grab the feed off our site so you can listen to the show from whatever podcast service app you prefer. I hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for listening. Take care. <laughs>